In this video, we'll introduce you to how we build and represent algorithms on a quantum computer. In the field of quantum computing, we write down circuits to illustrate how an algorithm or program is executed. These circuits are a bit different to the circuits you might see in electronics, which show connections in space. In quantum circuits, we show connections between qubits in space as well as operations performed in time. If you've ever played a musical instrument, you can think about a quantum circuit like a musical score that plays an algorithm as you read along. We will generally draw rails in our circuit, each representing a qubit with an initial state. Multiple qubits are represented by multiple rails. The horizontal axis then represents time. We can then add different logic operations, bit flips, phase slips, entangling gates called C knots, in order to build up a program. As time flows from left to right, the state of the qubits changes because of the operations. If you change the state in just the right way, you can actually solve a problem you care about. Let's look at a simple example, which we can illustrate using QControl's Black Opal. Let's start with two qubits, each initialized in the state zero. Now let's perform a Hadamard gate on the first qubit. This transforms zero to zero minus one. Next, let's perform a C knot between these two qubits. Doing so actually fundamentally changes things. Instead of two separate qubits, we now have an entangled pair of zero, zero, minus one, one. There is now no way to describe the qubits individually. Something you can see when you watch how the system evolves. The states actually contract to the middle of the sphere. Instead, the state lives in a space of correlations, describing how measurements on one qubit would be linked to measurements on the other. With this example, measuring 0 or 1 on one qubit would always result in the same measurement outcome on the other. That's because they aren't really independent anymore. That's a pretty simple example that does something really interesting, but not necessarily really useful. But if you add together enough qubits and enough operations in just the right way, you can actually perform something quite impactful, like Shaw's algorithm. Building a useful algorithm requires us to manipulate the enormous superposition state of all qubits in such a way that even when we destroy everything at the end by measuring our qubits, we still get a useful outcome. Shaw's algorithm is extremely clever because it figures out how to do this successfully. That's great, but Shaw's algorithm is very difficult to implement. Performing any useful factoring will require thousands of qubits, each capable of performing perhaps trillions of operations as the algorithm runs. Why aren't we there yet? The answer is noise, which causes errors in quantum computers. In our next video, we'll delve into this topic. You can learn more about QControl's quantum firmware and our tools to build error-robust quantum algorithms via our website.